In this problem, we have a dynamite blast, and it's blowing up a rock, and it has initial launch velocity of 160 feet per second, which, to give you perspective, is 109 miles per hour really fast. Reaches a height of, and it tells us that this is our position function after t seconds, and we're going to be, the s of t is going to be in terms of feet here in this case, since the 160 is actually used here in the problem. So it's asking us for part A, how high does the rock uh, go? So what happens if I throw something up in the air, it's going to go up in the air, and then at that one point it's going to stop, and then it's going to keep, fall back down. So you can find out where the maximum height is if you can find out where the velocity is going to be equal to zero. So we're going to take the derivative of this. In order to get the velocity function, we'll do that first. Then we'll set it equal to zero. Okay, for velocity, we take the derivative of this one. Derivative of 160t is just going to be 160. We're just going to get the constant in front of the t there. And this one, the 2 is going to come down. And multiply by the 16, we get negative 32t. So this is going to be your velocity function. We need to set it equal to zero to find out at the very highest point where it's going to stop. So I'm going to set it equal to zero, 160 minus 32t. I'm going to solve for this, and by solving that, it's going to give me five seconds. So t equals five seconds on that. If I uh, add 32 to both sides, divide by 32, I'll get five seconds. Now, five seconds is not going to be the answer because it's not asking for the time. It's asking for how high does the rock go. So I need to put five seconds back into the original one, and that's going to tell me how high it goes. So 160 times 5 minus 16 times 5 squared, that's what I want to work out. And this is going to tell me what the maximum height is going to be. So if I do that at five seconds, if I work that out, uh, my answer is going to be I put that into a calculator, I'm going to get 400 feet uh, as a result. So that would be how high it goes. It reaches a height of 400 feet. For part B, what is the velocity of the rock when it's 256 feet above the ground on the way up and on the way down? Recall, here are two formulas that we used. We had previously, this one was given to us. We found the velocity in part A. So what we have to do first is find out the time at which it reaches 256 feet. We can do that by using the first function, and we'll, we're going to put 256 in the left-hand side. So 256 equals 160t minus 16t squared. I want to solve this for t, so I have to get this equal to zero. I'm going to move these two over to the left-hand side. I get 16t squared minus 160t plus 256 equals zero. Now, I want to uh, factor this, so I can factor out a common factor first. I'll factor out a 16. And when you do that, you should get this as a result. So dividing, it, dividing everything out by 16, we'll get this on the inside. This is something we can factor one more time. So we're going to get t minus 2 and t minus 8 as a result when we factor that. Setting that equal to 0, the first one can't be equal to 0. Setting these two equal, you're going to get t is equal to 2 and 8 seconds. So we found the times at which the height is exactly equal to 256. So now I have to figure out whether it's moving up or uh, moving down at these different velocities. So I'm going I'm to be putting in 2 and 8 into our velocity function since that's what it's asking us for. If it's moving up, that means your velocity is positive. If it's moving down, velocity is negative. So we're going to use our velocity. Here's our velocity function again we had in part A. I want to find V of 2. So I'm going to do 160 minus 32 times 2. So at 2 seconds, uh, I get 96. This will be feet per second is the units. In this case, the velocity on the way up is 96 feet per second since it's of positive velocity. Then I want to find the velocity at 8 seconds, 160 minus 32 times 8. And this gives us a negative result. Uh, that's going to give us negative 96 feet per second. So that must mean that's the velocity when it's moving down. So moving up, it's positive velocity, 96 feet per second. Velocity on the way down 
be negative 96 feet per second. Part C. What is the acceleration of the rock at any time t during its flight after the blast? So since we're asking for acceleration, we got to find the acceleration function. We do that by taking the derivative of velocity that's given here. Derivative of velocity is acceleration. So if I take the derivative using the power rule, derivative of 160, that's uh, zero. This one, I just get negative 32 um, because again, it's a constant times a variable. Okay, so I get negative 32 and this would be feet per second squared would be the units on that. And that's actually gonna be the answer. So actually any time during, after the blast, during the flight, acceleration is always gonna be constant. That's because again, since uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, since you're on Earth, that's always gonna be the acceleration uh, no matter what, it's always gonna be constant. Part D, when does the rock hit the ground again? If it hits the ground, that means the position is gonna have to be zero because this is talking about how high something goes after a certain amount of seconds. So if I just set this equal to zero, that's gonna tell me when the object is not moving or when it's on the ground, how high, how high it is uh, will be zero in this case. For this problem, we're gonna do factoring, take out a common factor. In this case, you can factor out a 16t from both of those and you're gonna get a 10 minus t when you factor it. We're gonna set both these individually equal to zero, and when you do, you're gonna get zero and 10 seconds. So of course at zero seconds, it's gonna be on the ground. It's asking us for when does the rock hit the ground again? That's gonna occur at 10 seconds, so this is what you would put for your answer. So this is actually telling us that the uh, rock is gonna be in the air a total 10 seconds, so at 10 seconds, that's when it'll hit the ground again.